vegetable production, Dr. Savas. Thank you very much, Mr. Elianos. When I accepted the invitation to participate at this conference, I thought what I could contribute to this discussion in just 10 minutes. We know that the time is limited, so I will try in those 10 minutes to explain shortly which is the use of vegetable production for your area, for Thessaly. So, um, I am professor of vegetable production, as we have said, in the Agricultural University of Athens. First of all, let's give you a picture of the vegetable uh, cultivation in Greece, vegetable farming. The fruit and vegetables are cultivated in the 9% of the area, and vegetable is accounts only for 3% of the agricultural land. This is a small percentage, with, and the most important crops are potato, watermelon, tomato, and onion. Here you can see uh, a list of the vegetables that we cultivate, and uh, those are the four most important uh, crops. You can see which are the crops under shelter and which are the open field crops. We, we don't have time, so I will move forward. However, we might have to stress that uh, the area is 1 million stremas, more or less, and uh, 2 million tons of production in open field crops, and only 111,000 stremas are crops under shelter. I don't talk only about greenhouses, but also the uh, low, covered, uh, low coverage uh, crops. And this is a bit more than 1 million stremas, and more or less 2 million stremas uh, as a production. However, if we want to see that as a value of production, then we will be surprised since this 3% accounts for 20% of the uh, GDP of vegetable uh, in Greece, of the gross value in Greece, I apologize. So, vegetables is a very important branch for Greek farming, and we should uh, stress that the, both the state and the farmers pay attention to that branch. So, you can understand that for Thessaly, this is a very important choice. Shortly, I want to talk about the trends in the market. A very important part is marketed through supermarkets, and which is important on how we negotiate our prices with the uh, markets. Nowadays, consumers have increased demands when it comes to the quality and uh, the safety of food. And that leads to labeling and certifications and means that we should adapt our cultivation in order to meet those needs. Now, if we want to talk about imports and exports, the imports and the exports haven't really changed during the last years. You can see here the comparison between 2012 and 2018. 18. There is an increase both in imports and exports. The conclusion is, however, that exports are more than the imports when it comes to the vegetables. So the branch of vegetables is an export branch, something that brings income to uh, the country. And this is not a branch of farming that is based on subsidies. We should also take account the seasonality. Grain are collected during the summer and we can keep them for the whole year. And as 
The same happens with other crops. Unfortunately, vegetables should be produced at the same time. We should have a, a synchronization between the marketing of the product and the production of the product. They are seasonal, they are uh, very fragile products, so very soon they lose the uh, value and the uh, quality. So we need to produce throughout the year and therefore this is a sector that is produced in greenhouses vegetables are mainly produced in greenhouses but not only in greenhouses but also in low coverage uh, crops the seasonality in the production of vegetables means that there is also seasonality in prices you can see here the difference in watermelon in the prices of watermelon from april to october and of course, the people who produce earlier, they have uh, better uh, margins, uh, better income mar margins. Here you can see the fluctuation of the markets in the vegetable market of Thessaloniki. And you can see here, there are also the prices for the aubergine from two uh, different calendar years. Here you can see the bigger picture since aubergine is a product that is uh, grown and cooked and demanded by consumers throughout the year, you can see here that there is a curve uh, that is firmed like a V, and you can see that uh, the summer the prices are lower, but from autumn to December um, the prices also go up again. So. Uh, if you produce uh, aubergine after its uh, season of production, that means that the farmers can also get good prices. And since Greece has that climate conditions that allows to produce both earlier than the season and uh, after the season, we should take that into consideration and um, do uh, what we have to do. Of course, 10 minutes are not enough for us to discuss this whole issue. Another really interesting parameter is the uh, organic uh, vegetables and Greece um, ranks low when it comes to the production of organic vegetable. And you can see here some figures which shows that 0.85 of the uh, area, of the farming area, is where we farm uh, organic vegetables. And in the supermarket, you can see that the organic vegetables that we market has been imported. So we have a lot of um, area for improvement uh, and a lot of area for development uh, when we talk uh, about organic vegetable farming. And um, you can understand that the farmers who grow organic vegetables, we, they can market them easier. I will not discuss now with you that uh, if we should do only organic farming. However, we should bear in mind that there is a large market for organic vegetables. Therefore, Greek farmers should start producing them. I know that uh, organic farming is difficult, of course. And especially when it comes to vegetable, uh, this is even uh, more difficult since we have uh, a very difficult work with, with more... Uh, uh, difficulties. So organic uh, vegetable is based on crop rotation since you cannot grow the same product every year. So we have to rotate the crops on a systematic way. And here you can see an example in order to allow us to understand what crop rotation is all about. Last but not least, I will uh, not bore you because I have overcome the time allotted to me with an example from new uh, varieties, from new crops. A new uh, choice that is not marketed here in Greece, not grown, the so-called green soya. When I mean Greek soya, I mean soya for fresh, um, fresh uh, eating uh, as a vegetable. Especially younger people tend to eat more plant-based food. We have uh, vegetarians and vegans. Soya is a good choice for them because it is high in protein. Therefore, uh, there is an increasing market and demand for uh, those kinds of products. Of course, there are other uh, 
products too. Uh, fresh products is uh, the green beans, the peas, the green peas, but green soya is also a good choice. Soya, green soya, as not as feed, as animal feed, as um, vegetable to be consumed by uh, people. This is uh, something that is interesting for the region of Thessaly, where we know that we have uh, big areas um, and uh, that would be good to um, try out such a new uh, vegetable. Here you can see pictures of green soya beans. Green soya beans is marketed as a frozen uh, product and not as fresh product. And last but not least, uh, I haven't mentioned uh, the greenhouses. Uh, even if in our laboratory works uh, and collaborates uh, with the other laboratory uh, here in Thessaly, uh, we have here with us Mr. Kitas and Mr. Katsoulas. We work really hard and we focus on greenhouse crops and especially with hydroponic cultivation. We also have a, um, developed a software which is available for the farmers to use. And here you can see the web page where uh, uh, they can access it in order to help them uh, with hydroponic uh, farming. So we have contributed, we have a software that can support and help uh, farmers. Not only Thessaly, but also all around Greece. And we are happy since this software is has already been used by uh, great greenhouses and big companies, uh, both in Greek and abroad. Since we have subscribers also from other countries, even from the United States of America. Thank you very much.